Uh, hi everyone, my name is Victor. Uh, I'm a software dev at O Energy. Um, there's a few of us here today, so if anyone's keen to chat about what we do, then come chat with us afterwards. So I'm here today to talk about ACA actors, or more specifically about how we can use Cat's Effect and FS2 as a replacement in some cases. So I just thought I'd kick things off by asking you guys, how many of you use ACA in their projects? Show a hand. So it's like close to everyone, right? So can anyone tell me what ACA is really good at? What's like the single thing that ACA solves? Concurrency. Concurrency? Faster. What was that? Faster. Faster? No. Anyone else? Concurrent access on uh, Concurrency? Mutual state. Mutable state. No, but you, those are all challenges which ACA solves, or you can use ACA to solve them. But the, the real key thing that ACA solves is distributed computations, right? So how many of you who use ACA use ACA for distributed computations? So we have like one hand, two hands, which is not bad, right? But if you think about it, if ACA is really about uh, doing distributed computation, then we pay a really high cost for supporting that. You know how actors are like partial functions from any to unit. You know that we use go to mutability in actors, although there are some alternatives. And you know you can't instantiate actors normally. You have to use this like props thing. And the recommended way to use props it uses runtime reflection. And you can't call them like normal functions. You know you have to define a protocol with like products and core products, and you use this like question mark and exclamation mark syntax, like ask and tell syntax. And it relies on Scala Future, which is not pure. Um, and you know, you have to learn about supervision strategies, um, for better or worse. And you have actor life cycles, actor systems, and a lot of things to learn, right? But it, the key thing is, if we're not doing distributed computations, can we solve the challenges we're facing in a way that has less overhead, better type safety, more immutability and purity? And I think the answer is yes, and that's why I'm here today to talk to you about an alternative to ACA in case of non-distributed computations. Uh, you can find me on GitHub or Twitter. I have literally no more slides, so I'm just going to live code the rest. Um, so I'm going to switch over. Uh, so for this short um, presentation, I thought we implement an off algebra. Uh, so, for example, when you do auth, you might have a private key which you sign a like JWT token, you post that to some API, and in reply you get an auth token back which you can use to make like further requests. Uh, so, for example, you might put it in the authorization header of an HTTP request, and then the server can validate that for you. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to have one auth token that's shared across our application, so multiple places can use it, and this will expire eventually, and we want to renew it when it expires. Uh, so this is something you can typically model with an actor. It has a state, right? It manages concurrent access to that state. Um, and when the token expires or isn't there, we just renew it and then send it back. Uh, so we have a small off algebra here. Uh, I happen to know that we um, need a few things. So we have a type class from Cat's Effect called Concurrent Effect. We could actually relax this to concurrent and effect. But basically, effect allows us to run synchronous computations, uh, or it does a lot more, but uh, that in particular. And concurrent allows us to kick off a process and run that concurrently. Um, and then we get something back called a fiber, which I'll get into a bit later. Uh, we'll need an execution context, although that will probably change in the future. Uh, but it's here for now. And we need something uh, called a timer. So timer is not a type class but it's more like a scheduler. So you can say like sleep for a while and then do something, or you can grab the current time and you can also use it to shift execution onto another thread pool or to another thread. Uh, so I have two methods and one is to request a new auth token. So this is like actually going out to the API and doing some stuff. We won't actually be doing that. So we'll just use the fake for here. So I'm going to use the timer, I'm going to say now, which grabs the current time. We'll map now to, and we'll just create a little off token here. And we're going to say when it expires, I'm just going to add fixed amount. Maybe we'll add an hour. And we're just going to say that it's the value is token for now. And that's, that's just our new off token. You get a new one which expires in an hour. 
And then we have the request active auth token. So the idea is we always want to get an active auth token back whenever we, when we use this. You can see that it seems a bit strange. It has two Fs here. So we have F of F of auth token. And the first F is usually what we call the creation effect. So you have some state that you want to uh, create. So you evaluate the first effect and then you get another thing back which, which grabs the auth token. Well, we'll see how it looks like. So, the first thing we're going to do is we need uh, some state for the actor, right? So, a concurrency primitive you can use for that is called ref. If you're familiar with Haskell, you might know IO ref. So, it's basically a atomic reference or a volatile variable, but it's enclosed in an IO layer, so it's pure. Uh, so this is from FS2, so we'll create a ref, and what we say is ref off, and we'll say RF, and our state is going to be an option of off token. So when we start up, we're not going to have any off token yet, so it'll just be none. Um, so ref is mo has actually been merged into cat's effect, so some of these concurrency primitives I'll show you are in FS2, but they have nothing with streaming to do. It just happened that FS2 had to invent them first, or... Uh, had to create them to support their library, and now they're gradually moving into Cat's Effect. Uh, so it will change, but it's, the ideas are exactly the same. So then if we think about what an actor is, it basically takes um, incoming requests one at a time and does something with them, right? So we'll need a way to queue up requests, and you can use a queue for that, right? So let's create a queue. And by default, in Akka you have an unbounded queue, so we can create an unbounded queue from FS2. And then what's going to be in the queue? Well, we know that when we pick up a request, we're going to do something and then we'll reply back with the active auth token. So for that, we can use a promise. So promise says we can reply with something. And in this case, we'll just reply with an auth token, which will be the active one. So now we have everything the actor needs. Uh, so we should create the actor, right? I happen to know that this will return something called a fiber. We'll get into that in a second. So the actor, what it's going to do is it's going to pull something off the queue, the first message. So we do that with dq, q dq1. Uh, so we dq1 element, and then we're going to grab the existing off token from our state, from our ref. So existing off token, grab that from the ref. And then we have to check if the off token is active, if it's there, right? So we'll need a current time, so we'll grab now from uh, timer now. And then we're going to see what is the off token. So this is the thing we're going to return with, right? So we'll grab the existing off token. And we'll check, is it active? And I just pass in now, so it's active basically checks is now before the expiry time of the off token. And if that's there, we can just wrap that in an F. And if it's not, we're, we're going to have to request a new one. So we'll do a new for, and we'll say the new off token. We can get by request new off token. And once we got the new off token, we'll have to save it in our state, right? Before we reply back. So we can do that synchronously. You say ref set sync and it's some um, new off token. And finally we yield the new off token, which is what we're gonna return. So that's the off token we're gonna return, and now we have a promise which we need to complete, so we need to send this off token back. And what we do is we say promise complete with the off token. And our actor itself is not going to return anything right, because that's done by this uh, logic we just wrote. And then we're going to do this forever. So just keep doing the same thing over and over forever. And then I'm going to say start. So that kicks off this as a concurrent thing, which runs on the side. And what I get back is a fiber. So what a fiber uh, allows you to do is cooperative multitasking. So it has two methods. One is called join and one is called cancel. So join basically joins back whatever was running concurrently with you, whatever you is. And cancel, yeah, as the name says, tries to cancel it. 
So now we have our actor running in the background, but we still need a way to ask something of this actor. So, so we say active off token. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to create a promise. It's a promise. Oh, sorry. Better? Um, so promise that we'll get an off token back. And we're going to have to put that on a queue, right? Because the actor is going to process things off the queue. So we'll say queue offer one, and we'll put the promise there. And now the off token is, um, well, we can say just promise get, right? So I'm just going to wait asynchronously for the promise to complete. And what are we going to yield? We're going to yield the off token when we're done. And then we have the all outer for expression, which is going to return the how we, re we re first how we create the actor and then how we request an active off token. So it, it yields the active off token. And hopefully that seems somewhat okay. So IntelliJ kind of gives us a hint here, right? That fiber is unused, the squiggly lines. And that's actually a warning sign here. So if this actor encounters any problems, you have a concurrently running process, right? And if you get an exception, you're going to crash. So that's not accounted for here because we're just saying, I'm put a promise on this queue and I'm going to wait for it till it completes. But if the actor shuts down, I'm just going to wait forever. So we probably don't want that to happen, right? So one way we can deal with that, we can say fiber and we can say join and then we're going to raise that with the promise or the completion of the promise. And then I'm going to say, I just care about the right side. So right is going to be the off token. Okay. Yeah, and um, basically what that does, if the if the actor shuts down for any reason, the exception will be propagated um, to the caller. You could deal with this in different ways, but that's one way to deal with it. Um, that's basically the actor. Um, the way we use this, maybe we should see that it compiles. That's always a good idea. So we run it, and you can see we got an off token back. I'm not sure you can see it, but it prints off token. So the way you use this is you have your off algebra. You say request active off token, and you get back something which is an F of off token. I use IO here, but you could use any effect type which integrates with cat's effect type classes. So this is something you would do at like a top level, somewhere top level in your application, and then you could pass it around, and whenever you need it, you just pull it out of the request active off token, and then you can use it, yeah. So here we just print the active off token as a result, and then we finish. Uh, yes, so uh, we can generalize this a bit, so this is like a general actor, and we can um, refactor it into a pattern. So just thought I'd show you how that looks like. IntelliJ is not happy. Oh, there we go. Okay. IntelliJ problems. Um, so we can generalize what I just shown you into a pattern. So an actor, an actor is for some f, for some state s, and some uh, output. And it has an initial state s, whatever that is, and it has a receive method, which is a ref to some output wrapped in f. Um, so this is in the case where you don't need to pass any input. You just say like I want a thing, and you don't need to supply an input. And the code is basically exactly what I showed you before, except we call this receive function instead of the uh, active off token implementation. If you want input instead, um, you can do that as well. It's almost as uh, easy as doing actor. So now we have an additional type param, which is i. 
for input, we still have an initial state, and our receive function is now some input plus the current state, and we're going to generate an output that we can reply with. Uh, and it, the code looks pretty much identical to what you saw before. So it's, it's quite easy to generalize. Uh, and if we look at how the off algebra now looks like, uh, we just call actor. We say the initial state is none, just like before. Our receive method has a ref, and then we just use that to do the exact same steps that I showed you earlier. Um, so it's quite easy to refactor. Um, that's pretty much what I had. I can show you. So one thing that's quite good to know about is safe app or what's going to be IO app in Cat's Effect. So you can see that this method just returns an IO of something, and then at some point we're just going to evaluate that. So the end of the world is basically in this run method, and it returns an IO, and then we're just going to evaluate that at the very end. So you can describe your uh, app in like a pure functional way. So safe app, which I've defined here, is just um, a run method, which we implement. And the main method is just running that with the arguments and calling unsafe or unsafe at the very end. So this is going to be in Cat's Effect probably one release or RC2, which is scheduled for 1st of June. And yeah, I think that was pretty much what I had.